Pelicans keep the same starting lineup, but changes were made as New Orleans beat Toronto by 30. Let's take a look at what was different in this game in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked on Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with you all on this Tuesday, come to you live from Los Angeles and in my hotel room, hence the different background here. So if the audio is a little bit off, that might be why it's just kind of a different room. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first to listen every Every single day, we're free, available five days a week for you all, breaking down everything you want to know about this team. The wins, which they finally got, the losses, which they had before this, and of course the trades and rumors and all the Zion stuff, we're covering it all here like nobody else, Monday through Friday, five days a week, breaking it all down. And look, the Pelicans got a big win. I was less than optimistic going into this one when we heard it was going to be the same starting lineup that in yesterday's show we said there need to be some changes lo and behold they go out and win by 30 so we're going to break this game down we're going to look at is it what there were some changes right i want to look at those in particular and then of course we need to talk about brandon ingram masterful in this one alongside cj mccollum who was also excellent so let's get started today's episode of locked on pelicans so it's not easy to beat the Toronto Raptors by 30. They're a really good team as they've gotten healthy and kind of gotten into a groove after two really rough years for them, I think, including this year. They look like the Toronto Raptors that won the NBA title a couple of seasons ago. So this seemed like it was going to be tough. So to win by 30, 120, 90 is just kind of what what happened, right? Especially when you looked at the starting backcourt of C.J. McCollum and Devontae Graham, and it was just like Fred Van Vliet is going to absolutely feast. But he didn't. Fred Van Vliet did score 20 points, but it took him 15 shots to get there. He was 6 of 15 in this one. Gary Trent Jr., who went on an insane heater where he was scoring 30-plus points, 35-plus points for like 6 or 7 or 8 straight games, he was not great in this one. 6 points on 2 of 15 shooting. So look. It helps when the Toronto Raptors play like New Orleans did. 8 of 34 from 3, it's 24%. 30.5% from the field. They were just chucking up bricks for a lot of the night. But the New Orleans defense was there. So, irregardless of who was in the starting lineup and what some of the changes were, this was a team that came out with a different defensive intensity than we had seen the past couple of games. They really ratcheted it up. And I'm going to talk about Brandon Ingram in the next segment, but... He was right there kind of leading the charge. You also had Jose Alvarado locking up guys like Pascal Siakam. Dude's barely six foot, and he's doing this sort of thing. There was a defensive intensity we really hadn't seen, and you could tell that New Orleans wanted to get off their little losing streak, wanted to finally get a win with C.J. McCollum, and at times straight up out-hustled and outworked this Toronto Raptors team. So that was a little bit different, right? Their their kind of intensity and the way they approached this one was significantly different. There was more cohesion, too. That's going to tie into what we'll talk about with Brandon Ingram. But it is the benefit of being at home for a while. You have some time to kind of get some practice in and can, you know, play with your guys a little bit more and start to see it translate in uh, into, like, quality play out there on the court. But... Despite the same starting lineup, and again, I don't know if I'm sold on this idea, the rotation was different. And that's a really big part of why they managed, I think, to win this game. It kind of fixed a lot of the problems and was like 75% of kind of what you want to see that starting lineup do. At around the seven-minute mark, the first sub out was Devontae Graham. And in came Jackson Hayes. So you're getting kind of that lineup that we've wanted to see, that starting lineup that we've wanted to see of... C.J. McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, Jackson Hayes, and Jonas Valanciunas. It worked, right? You saw Jackson Hayes out there go 6 of 7 from the field for 14 points. He's so efficient. And look, that's a huge boon off the bench, right? 
as other guys start to kind of filter in in that lineup, he's already kind of cooking a little bit and now a focal point for the Toronto Raptors defense or any defense that he's going to be playing. So that keeps the pressure and the heat on them, and you don't have one of those nights like you did the other night where your bench basically gives you nothing because now you're putting your bench in an advantageous position by threading them in and mingling them in with the starters. And I think that can be a really important thing. So that was really the biggest change, just kind of the change in the rotation and lineups that Willie Green wanted to go out and use. You saw a little bit of funkiness out there at times too. And I think it unlocked some of these guys. Again, Jackson Hayes going six of seven. If he's doing that off of the bench, this team's going to be okay. And their offense is going to light it up. Again, there's some issues defensively, certainly. But if you put him out there and he plays 20 minutes and he scores 14 points and only missed one bucket, sign me up for that. Again, that size and that length really does seem to mess with teams, both offensively and defensively, too. They're they're pretty good there. And it just gives an extra body that's at least some rim protection or deterrent. He's got long arms and he can block some shots. There was also a different approach in this one. This goes to the cohesion that I was talking about, right? They wanted to go to Jonas Valanciunas early. They knew he had a little bit of a mismatch that at least you were going to force the Toronto Raptors into rotations on defense. He was trying to punish them down low, and the Pelicans were actively trying to get him the ball. And it worked, right? He finished with 18 points on the night on 6 of 9 shooting. You know how ridiculous that is? Doubling your... Uh, points per shot, basically. That's because he was 6 of 6 from the line. Also grabbed 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 blocks. All of those are excellent numbers. They just played like smart basketball where you try hard. And that's you're going to win games, right? Like Sometimes I, I don't think we need to overthink it, right? You, you had a smart game plan, you went out, you executed it, and there you go. Helps that the Toronto Raptors shot poorly. Helps that New Orleans didn't shoot poorly, right? 6 of 35 from 3. That's 46%. We haven't seen a night like that from, from this team since like way early January, maybe even December. 16 made threes? Sign me up for that. That's like a number this team never does. Multiple guys, multiple guys hit multiple threes. That's awesome. Including CJ McCollum, by the way, 23 points, 5 of 18 shooting. We'll talk about him coming up in the third segment. So just more cohesion, more kind of a a game plan going out and executing it. And again, making your shots is a really important thing. Not Devontae Graham, who was one of five, but actually wasn't terrible overall in this game, I didn't think, even if his shot's not falling. And again, they took him out early. They got the right guy in there. And I think that really did help him. And New Orleans basically led this one wire to wire as they got out to that early lead and just never looked back. So Brandon Ingram, if you look at the box score, you're going to see 10 total points. And you're going to be like, huh, what's going on? But that does not tell you how freaking good he was in this game. Let's talk about it coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans brought to you by Bet Online. Football might be over for this season, but basketball is in full swing for both pro and college hoops. So for the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired head coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs this year. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey boxing UFC odds right to the Olympic coverage and whatever information you may need so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action betonline.net betonline where the game starts all right thank you for making locked on pelicans your first listen every day we're free and available five days a week for y'all now for your next listen check out the locked on now podcast Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. You can't look at a box score and understand what happened. You need the context around everything. That's where the local guys who cover the team on a daily basis and know them better than anyone provide that in the span of like a minute because that's all the clips are. So you get a rundown and the biggest takeaways and the context around it in all of like 10 minutes. Go check out the Locked On Now podcast. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, we're talking about the Pelicans beating the Toronto Raptors, 120-90. That's just a wild number to really think about. And Brandon Ingram, despite only having 10 points, right, was so unbelievably good in this game. Again, I said in the cold open, like, what changes were made? There were changes made. 
they were all on the same page. Those practices and being at home and having this homestand is really important thing to try and build some of that cohesion. Brandon Ingram kind of settling into a nice groove of flinging ridiculous assists everywhere was awesome. He really stepped into this facilitator role in this one. He didn't want to do the you go, then I go, then you go, and I go thing with CJ McCollum. He wanted to go out and try and assist his teammates and help them win basketball games. Just really as simple as that. And he did. And it worked perfectly in this one. He finished with eight assists on the night. 11 rebounds too. He's two assists shy of a triple-double. Only took seven shots. But they assisted across the board incredibly well. And you saw the team on the night finished with, I think it was 36 assists. That's a season high for him this year. They fit into a really nice groove. A lot of the the complaints about the CJ McCollum trade was there's only one basketball to go around. But when you have an all-star in Brandon Ingram, former all-star, who can dish out assists like he was doing, and those passes were slick, you guys. There were some behind-the-back moves. There were just, no like, look off a defender, fire one that way. Got Herb Jones wide open with that. Got lobs to people. He broke them out in every number of ways. And this is why I thought this fit works. Because you have Brandon Ingram, who's willing to just be a, a, a selfless player. That's the word I'm thinking of. Selfless. He wants to just go out and try and help this team win however it is. And doesn't care if he's not the leading scorer or anything like that. He's fine dishing assists, grabbing rebounds. And so to kind of settle into that role on a night when he didn't need to carry the scoring load, and those eight assists came in three quarters. He didn't play in the fourth. That he, it's like, it's not quite Swiss Army knife. That's not the right phrase to use with him, but it makes you root for the guy so easily, right? Like he's just, whatever you need him to be, he's willing to be it other than I guess a villain because he's awesome and you don't need to worry about something like that with him. But he, he's starting to hit a level that you see these elite point guards do. And Chris Paul was really excellent at this. It's knowing where guys like to get the ball, not just their spot on the court, right? Oh, this guy likes to shoot from the left side or the right side or from mid range. I know where their spots are on the court, where they get hot from. Let me get the ball there to them. It's not just that it's knowing like where in their, on their body, they like to catch it. Where's their shooting pocket that they can get the ball and then immediately get it up and go. And he's starting to realize all of that. And that's why you're seeing a lot of these passes he makes get converted into made shots because he's not just getting them the ball and letting them do their thing. He's actively like helping them beyond just getting them the ball, getting them in spots where they want it. And you're starting to see his growth and recognition in that. And I don't want to put him on a level of Chris Paul or one of those elite point guards. He's not there as a passer yet. He could maybe get there. But he's willing to, you know, be the, not the connector, the facilitator, that's the word I'm thinking of, to these other guys. And instead of trying to be the scorer and isn't stressed about it, they got the win and he was thrilled. And also this dude on defense was awesome. Had that block at the end of the third. He was outstanding and hustling his ass off defensively in this game in ways we hadn't seen him do at all last season. And even though his defense has been better this year, this was like the first one where it kind of made you open your eyes and go, oh, wow, look what he's capable of. One steal, two blocks in this one for him. Just two turnovers, too. He was outstanding in this game. And it does make you think that a lineup of C.J. McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, Zion Williamson, and Valanciunas could work. There's enough facilitating there between all of those guys to really make it work. Who cares if there's only one ball? When you have guys that are willingly going to pass the ball to the hot hand that night. And the hot hand in this game, C.J. McCollum, after he scored 36 the other night, he scored 23 in this one. But let's talk about it and how good he was and his shot. Fall in and the other things he did coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. But before we get to that, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar out there. I'm on the road and my backpack's over there in the hotel room, but I have four Built Bars in there. One for every day I'm in LA. I keep these things in my bag when I'm on the road. If I can't stop and grab some food, I have a big meeting coming up. I like to have a little bit of protein. 
help my mind, right? Try and eat healthy instead of just driving through like in and out every single time I can. I eat one of these and I'm feeling good about it. It's helping me this year eat healthier than I have in the past. And when I have sugar cravings or things like that and I get those, I just grab a Bilt Bar. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. They've got unbelievably delicious flavors. I have the coconut brownie chunk in my bag. These things are so awesome that you've got to give them a try. If you've had protein bars before that are chalky, that are dry, that you need to ch like chug a bottle of water with, these are not them. They're soft. They, they're they easy to chew. They taste so good. You're going to be shocked the first time you take a bite out of one of these things. And go to Built.com and check out the macros on these things. 130 calories, 4 grams sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to anything else. Bill Bar is going to win every time. So go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15, you're going to get 15% off your order again. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off over at Built.com. All right, thank you for making Lockdown Pelicans your first listen every day. We're free and available five days a week, breaking down everything you want to know about this team. Trades, big wins, 30-point wins over the Toronto Raptors like we're talking about right now. Now for your second listen, Locked On Saints, host Ross Jackson, breaking down everything black and gold, and it's a pivotal offseason. they got to get this right. They can compete and easily be in the Super Bowl this coming season, especially if they figure out the QB situation. And Ross over at Locked On Saints is going to be breaking it all down. So make sure they are your second listen today. All right, Pelicans beat the t Toronto Raptors by 30 Sean Woodley, our Locked On Raptors host, a guy I really like, and I think one of the great hosts that we have in our like group DM, our group chat, just texted in pain, which made me feel kind of good, right? You got to like that when you make the other host feel bad about things. And Sean, if you're listening today, sorry, not sorry, kind of situation, I think, a little bit here. CJ McCollum in this one, excellent again. After, you know, a rough first game against Miami Heat, no less who's good, he... Bounced back. 36 the other night against the San Antonio Spurs in a loss. And now in a game when they really needed to get a win, he finishes with 23 points on the night. On 9 of 13 shooting, that's 69, nice, 0.2%. 5 of 8 from 3. 5 of 8 from 3. 62.5% from there. 4 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals, not one single turnover. He was active on the defensive side of the ball, trying to make plays and do things. Even though it was mainly Jose Alvarado from the guard spot that was really helping him out with that. But CJ McCollum out there doing it. But we knew his offense was going to fall. But how nice is it to have a shooter that when he launches a three, you just feel good. You're not worried about it whatsoever. So you see why they brought him in. Brandon Ingram can facilitate. C.J. McCollum can make the shots. This was one of those games where you trust him all the time with the ball. And the Pelicans did. They looked to get him involved early. Kick out passes, right? Off the dribble threes. Let him facilitate a little bit, too, to keep the defense off balance. All of it worked. Scoring at all three levels, too. We really saw that, though, against the San Antonio Spurs. Mid-range, at the rim, and, of course, the three ball is something that he is excellent with but you saw it mainly shooting from three in this one mainly from the left side of the court but he was still willing to get downhill to attack the basket and if he needed to pull up from mid-range and make a jumper he missed only one shot inside the free throw line in this didn't take a ton of them partially because his three-point shot was falling right but still that's like really good and so he was excellent in this one everyone was kind of good in this one for the most part Jose Alvarado gave you great minutes off the bench even Garrett Temple decided to hit three threes in this one in garbage time so don't read too much into that though Trey Murphy still can't get minutes even though we'd really like to see him there and this is just nice win like nice win Tony Snell got his first points as a Pelican Garrett Temple by the way eight straight points in this one that's how well things were flowing for New Orleans but CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram starting to see the early returns after a little bit of time together. Let's see if it continues tonight against the Memphis Grizzlies. Big game. We're going to be recapping it tomorrow on Locked On Pelicans. So thank you all very much for listening. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And I'll be back with you all tomorrow to recap the game.